recording this kind of kind of meeting of the civic forum where we'll be discussing the city mobility plan. The plan um, consists at the moment replaces the, the, uh, the previous local transport strategy, which of course um, replaced a, a previous set of documents in the legislature, but that um, and, and somewhat different. Um, the current plan, the current plan is a, a rather different beast and um, more detailed. Transformation program will um, have much more detail associated with it, and many of us have already contributed to um, um, uh, consultation opportunities on the transformation program. And the Waverley Station Master Plan will have a, a detailed implementation plan. Again, um, some of us will have contributed to uh, some of the early consultations on that master plan. And not the, we, we made um, consultations, responses to consultations in many of these projects, which are existing projects, not new. Um, that we haven't necessarily been fully supportive of them, but we're um, um, taking up in many cases the opportunity to respond to the, to the consultations. Following from um, 2022, we move to the next milestone, which is 2025. Again, not um, very far away in the context of, of the mobility plan, which is, as we'll see, largely a project implementation plan. Um, by that time, um, there'll be further planning, further planning of a of a, a mass rapid transport um, system for the city, moving large numbers of people about using active travel, public transport, trams, trains, integration of all those means of moving people about. Um, the, the, there'll be further progress on um, investigating the feasibility of, ex of extending uh, the tram line. George Street, which has been the subject of intensive because will, will be transformed into a, a more pleasant, highly pedestrianized place. Income from the work, workplace parking levy, which should be in place, will begin to, to provide funding for a range of, of green renewable transport initiatives across the city. The low emission zones, zone zones, will have um, been implemented and particularly in those areas of very poor quality at the present time. And the, the, the environment uh, will have, will have improved um, across the city. At least that's what the, the plan um, sets out to do, and we'll touch in more detail on that in a moment. And finally, looking towards the end of the, 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 the new plan, 2030, at, the, this, this, the, at this point, it was really quite transformational, very large scale transformational initiatives, envisioning a, a, a mass transport network actually in place, actually moving and um, large numbers of people around the city every day in a very sustainable way. As part of that, the city's um, existing parking rights will be improved, further parking rights will be considered. Major um, uh, achievement that this plan points towards is, is the start of a car-free city centre by 2030, 10 years time. Again, we'll touch on that in a moment in terms of the Coburn's own comments on that. Um, and act in terms of active travel, um, the number of people using, using bicycles and, and similar um, forms of uh, uh, transport to move around the city will also have um, increased because the, the, the range and nature of, of, of usable safe cycle routes will have been increased. And in addition to George Street uh, that I mentioned, there'll be a more pro um, extensive program of pedestrianisation. Waverley Station, um, the transformation of Waverley Station, the, the physical works to do that will be underway. And again, 
We'll touch on that in more detail in a moment when we consider the COBRA's own comments. So what do we think as the COBRA overall? Well, we welcome the draft plan, um, but, but it's not really a plan in our view. It's a programme of projects and that has certain impl impl implications going forward. But we do think it shows ambition. But is it measuring the um, success and failure of, of previous transport plans and strategies? Does it, does it learn from those plans and strategies? And um, does it signpost based on, on the successes of the past, what would, what would be best and better in the future? We're not sure. Nor do we think it really touches on the issue of maintenance of existing infrastructure, whether that's pedestrian infrastructure um, or, or, or existing um, bus public transport infrastructure. And we're not sure if there's sufficient detail in terms of costs and funding. In fact, in some cases, particularly for the later stages of the plan, there's very little of anything at all. And does it really address and live up to the um, much talked about climate emergency? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Of course, part of the plan, part of the purpose of the plan is to uh, contribute towards uh, a carbon neutral city by 2030, but that is only part of the climate emergency agenda. And of course, obviously, I would have to say, it doesn't really address issues arising from the current pandemic. How could it? It, would, it didn't, it wasn't, it was developed over the past couple of years and the current pandemic um, wasn't um, on the agenda then. Is that an issue? Well, it might be, and again, as I mentioned, we'll consider that on a, um, at the end of this presentation on the final slide. Um, we've got some um, more, um, more specific comments on the, the visions uh, uh, set out to, towards the first milestone, the 2022 milestone. We support that vision. Of course, it is largely implement, implemented already or, or, or soon will be. It's, there are projects, there are infrastructural initiatives, um, there, there are project planning initiatives which are essentially on the table underway um, they're not new. So in that context, are they really ambitious enough? And again, I, I mentioned the current pandemic because that might have implications and we'll explore those in a moment. In terms of the visions, the, the plan's vision towards 2025, again, we're supportive, but it, there is a, a very limited time frame for the implementation of even the 2022 projects and when you add more projects, there is a question mark of, of, of are they deliverable, given the difficulty that Edinburgh historically seems to have had in delivering infrastructural projects. Anything that enhances active travel, we support, and we welcome um, the signposting of links towards the city plans policies, but and, and the development of more sustainable neighbourhoods. But we'll touch on that again because that's quite an important um, link that, um, that is, is made or is suggested between the mobility plan and the, the, the city plan. In the workplace levy, well, it has been successful in Nottingham, but that is the only example in the UK. It might be successful in Edinburgh, but in the, Not in the Nottingham um, situation, it took a number of years to bed down. And have, and, and it does indeed at the moment provide a useful source of funding, but is it about con managing congestion? Is it about sustainable travel or is it simply about um, identifying a new source of funding? And in the context of the climate emergency, for example, is it really ambitious enough in terms of what the plan sets out for as, as bolder actions towards 2025? But sort of leave that question on the table for the moment. And looking towards the end, the, the really, really bold actions that the plan signposts towards 2030. Well, you know, again, we're supportive of what the council's trying to do, but we do have some further um, um, reservations. If the city, city region can have a mass transport network, network, that would be a good thing. But we're concerned about building park and rides, more park and rides, perhaps not in the city, around the city, Perhaps that would improve 
congestion in the city, but is it, is it moving the problem of congestion, the problem of, of pollution to, to other parts of the city region, and is that acceptable? And is it really, really, really realistic to, to envision a car-free city centre by 2030? Well, possibly. Other cities have made progress. There's no reason why Edinburgh couldn't make progress, but is it realistic? And whilst we are very supportive of any additional provision for active travel, we, we are concerned that what's in the mobility plan does seem to be mostly about expanding cycling networks. Well, there's very little about pedestrians. We've, all, we've also made some more specific comments, specific uh, comments relating to um, the specific questions within the um, consultation, online consultation um, document. So in terms of the, the Council's, the mobility plans proposals for enhancing public transport, well, of course, we have, we're supportive of, of, of in general terms, of expanding the tram, tram, tram network and supporting public transport co coordination. Clean, safe, efficient public transport, we make the point, is, is, is a foundation for a sustainable citywide low carbon uh, transport system for Edinburgh in the future. But very importantly, and this came out of our, our unique city discussions over the past year or so, for many people, for many residents in the city, life has become very complex with 24-7 working, all sorts of caring responsibilities and challenges of, of um, juggling two, three different sorts of part-time insecure jobs. And all of that means that people very often no longer have nine to five jobs. They don't leave work at eight and come home at five. They have to make complex journeys during a comp as part of a complex life um, all week, all day. And in that context, the, 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 there is the, a question lurking that asks, is the city mobility plan really agile enough to cope with life as it is now? And whilst I've previously raised the fact that the the mobility plan does signpost links towards the city plan 2030. Um, we don't really see those links in a very tangible way. We're supportive of um, anything that creates people-friendly streets. And within that, we support segregated cycling, cleaner vehicles, and anything that brings about fewer freight vehicles in, in running around the, particularly the centre of the city. But, uh, and I would say, if you haven't read this, I would, I would suggest it's, it's, it's worthwhile taking some time to read the comments just made by Living Streets Edinburgh relating to the lack of priority given to pedestrians within the current draft city mobility plan. Um, the plan sets out signposts, the need to enha enhance, improve, support the pedestrian environment across the city. But in terms of what the, the projects, the plan outlines, there doesn't seem to be very much there for uh, pedestrians. And also, and this comes again out of, of, of things we, which, which the public told us during our, our unique, city, unique city discussions, um, it's all very well having new infrastructure, but it's extremely and perhaps more important to ensure the timely and high quality maintenance of existing infrastructure. And that includes infrastructure to support and facilitate safe streets for pedestrians. It might be street markings, it might be road markings, it might be um, signage, but maintenance is a starting point after which, and if you, if you have a good maintenance regime in place, then you can add to it. But new infrastructure isn't a substitute for maintenance. And coming out of some of, 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 of the presentations, which we were lucky to have in, uh, at some of our Coburn events over the past couple of years, um, which where we, among other things, talked about urban ecology, well, streets, going forward, particularly within a climate emergency context, 
have other functions. Um, streets, street trees, for example, uh, can contribute to um, cooling um, the city uh, as, as the summer climate warms. That's what happens, for example, in Copenhagen, happens in other um, continental cities already. Uh, it's not really something we have seriously um, addressed in Edinburgh, but we need to think, perhaps think about this as we think about streets, as we think about transport infrastructure, tra new transport interventions. Um, new planning, well, again, uh, as part of um, um, consultations over the past couple of years, um, we have been very supportive of ideas such as um, transport hubs and anything that supports active travel. But um, again, in terms of new developments, it's crucial that, that, the, that there are clear, tangible links between the mobility plan and the city plan 2030 policies for consultation at the moment, and that those policies agreed in city plan 2030 are actually successfully implemented in general, but in, in terms of our discussion here, in terms of what the city plan 2030 sets out to do to achieve a more sustainable um, um, travel environment, particularly in the context of new developments, and, and, and that largely means new developments on the fringe of the city. Um, uh, again, in terms of managing public tra managing travel demand, very supportive of anything which could, could creates a better, more usable, more pleasant public transport and active travel uh, environment, and, and we would support um, the council if, in its wish to explore road user charging. But we're particularly um, keen in, to ensure that, that the council and everything it does, it meets the reasonable expectations of um, ordinary residents in the city, and particularly any residents with mobility issues and mobility challenges. It, it meets the issues that those residents have in terms of what they expect to have as, as a, a usable, available um, transport system. And I've already mentioned, of course, the fact that for some people, some people with complex working lives, the transport systems of the past are, are not suitable, are, do not meet the needs of what they need now and what they will need within the lifetime of, of this draft plan. Uh, this pretty much is the final slide before we go into the discussion. Um, we know, of course, this, the tragic current pandemic was, from most, from most perspectives, um, unpredictable. Of course, the current mobility plan couldn't take into account the impacts of the pandemic, but we know, in term, we know that the current mobility plan is essentially an infrastructural plan, uh, and infrastructure has, at least in the short term, been significantly impacted by the pandemic. In the medium to long term, there may well be implications in terms of labour supply, um, and goods and services, contractual difficulties for any kind of project going forward. So in that context, maybe there's an opportunity now to stand back and think, well, um, it, it, can we deliver the infrastructure in the way, when and, 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 in, and in the way that the draft mobility plan currently suggests, um, or, or do we need to uh, think think out the box? Do we need a, 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 a different mobility plan um, uh, to, that focuses on behavioural change and perhaps fo focuses less on infrastructure if, that, if it is no longer going to be possible to deliver the much of the current plan uh, as it's currently aligned? And so that, that's, hopefully it wasn't too quick, but that's uh, so, um, through to our discussion now. So kind of open it up for discussion, I think, you know, kind of in summary is what we've seen um, in the plan is some of the issues we support the general kind of thrust, but it's, um, I think just emphasize what James said, we don't see it as being a kind of a plan or even a strategic framework. It's a, pro it's a program of projects, which is uncosted um, and doesn't really have, have a, a set form of delivery. So, you know, how is it going to come together going going forward?